Those charged with reinventing Dubai often say, if we build it, they will come. Well, it's working. They're coming. In 1975, Dubai's population was 185,000 people. It has doubled every 10 years, and today can boast more than 1.2 million residents. It's only about 20% of the population actually Dubai, and the rest are from just about in any country you can name. The airplanes are landing at an astonishing rate, and they're drawn there to view a phenomenon. We're all fascinated by a place that has made a commitment to growth. But that growth has brought with it some unanticipated problems. For such a small place, it's incredible how quickly they have developed gridlock. And you drive in Dubai, it's pretty much stop and go traffic a large chunk of the day. So finding some solution to the traffic problem has become a, a, a big interest for the city planners. One solution constructed out of desperation was the Dubai Floating Bridge, a name that seems improbable given that it was built with 19,000 tons of cement and reinforced with 1,500 tons of steel. But it does float on six and a half foot polyurethane blocks filled with compressed air and reinforced with concrete. This, the longest bridge of its kind in the world, was completed in only 10 months and its six lanes can accommodate over 6,000 vehicles an hour. An ecological advantage is that the bridge does not disturb the flow of water underneath it, allowing for barnacles and sea algae to grow, attracting and sustaining existing sea life. Originally thought of as a temporary solution, the Dubai Floating Bridge has become a permanent symbol of Dubai's resourcefulness. And in 2008, construction will begin on another bridge, this one of breathtaking proportions. The bridge is named after Sheikh Mohammed's father, in honor of the man that originally dredged the creek and helped put Dubai on the map. Its tallest arch will reach nearly 700 feet above sea level. Technology truly guides great architecture, and that has been through the history of architecture, uh, with the advent of concrete, with the advent of steel. Once completed, it will be over a mile long, making it the longest spanning arch bridge in the world, capable of transporting up to 20,000 vehicles per hour. Adding bridges will only solve some of the problem. Thousands of people arrive in Dubai every month. The growth are really beyond expectation. So we had four uh, mass transit studies. The last study has showed that Dubai needs uh, a very uh, massive people transit uh, systems. And what Dubai needs, it gets. The new Dubai Metro will be a completely driverless system with a top running speed of over 55 miles per hour. It will transport hundreds of thousands of residents and workers to all corners of Dubai. With nearly 45 miles of total track, the Metro will be the longest fully automated rail system in the world. To complete the project as fast as possible, construction continues 24 hours a day. The sheer number of people working on the Metro is staggering. We have 24,000 people working at this time, and this is even not the peak. Totally, it could be 27,000 uh, people on this project. While most of the tracks are perched high above the roads and highways, the most congested areas of Dubai will be over 50 feet below the surface. Dubai's underground consists mainly of sandstone, making it ideal terrain for a tunneling boring machine. Meet Al Bugesha, named after a small burrowing rodent of Africa. The machine presses its rotating cutting head against the tunnel face, creating a passageway over 30 feet in diameter. It's uh, between 300 and 350 a meter per month. That's over 1,000 feet a month. With over seven miles of track underground, including a mile that goes under the Dubai Creek, 
the metro will ease congestion and make Dubai an even greater draw for outsiders. Having a metro fully automated is really is, is a symbol of uh, civilization, a symbol of really globalization. So this is really a part of the, the, the Dubai vision, to be a city of the future. Look any direction in Dubai and you'll see cranes, thousands of them, blanketing the Dubai skyline. Like a giant erector set, they serve as a constant reminder of Dubai's desire to outdo itself. Comparing the Dubai of 1990 to the Dubai of 2008 makes clear how radical the transformation has been. And then in five years, everything else might change and it will have a different vision. And I know there is a lot of projects in the pipeline, so it's continuously evolving. From sky to sand, to ice and snow, and out to the sea, Dubai is the city to turn to for a look at what the future will hold as it pushes the boundaries of what's feasible and makes the impossible possible. It's a vision that is limitless. We're living history. And as part of history, hopefully we'll be able to discover what lies ahead.